uh, it was 2004 oh. I was diagnosed. Yeah. Um, we, at the time we were living in Charleville in um, central west um, Queensland. Um, I was there with my oldest daughter um, and my wife was on the coast at the time having our third um, child. Oh. Um, on the coast as in Maroochydore where her parents live. Um, I came down to visit um, after the baby was born uh, and wasn't feeling well. I'd hurt my back lifting some furniture. Um, went to the local GP. Um, he said, uh, just some anti-inflammatories. Anti um, have a week off, you'll be right. Went back again, back and forth three times. Um, basically, and then they said, go back to Charleville, you'll be right, just take it easy. Um, I got up to go back on the Tuesday morning and uh, my wife, who just got out of hospital, said, how about you go for a second opinion? Went down the road to another one of the doctors, local GPs at the coast, and uh, he said, how about we go for a blood test just to rule out leukaemia? And wow. I was sort of a little bit taken back, said, yeah, yeah, whatever. Had the blood test and he, um, at 11 o'clock, and he rang me at about four and said sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so we, he said, get up to the Budrum Private Hospital. Um, there'll be a doctor meet you up there, a specialist. Um, was there for a couple of nights. Uh, he said, you'll need to go to Brisbane uh, to the MARTA, and he teed it up with uh, Dr. to come down and see him. And that was the Friday morning. He said, be there by seven. Arrived at quarter to seven and started treatment at half past seven. What a surreal yeah. experience. Was that very numbing for you? Well, it was, it was a little bit, um, um, obviously, in great shock because I didn't, one, didn't know anything about leukaemia. Mm. And the first question I asked was it the same as what Simon O'Donnell had? Because oh. that's the only person I've ever known that's had, had leukaemia, a high profile person. Yeah. And he said, no, no, a little bit worse than that. And we didn't sort of think too much and, yeah, just go down and have the treatment. So it was quite a sudden onset. What yeah. kind of leukaemia did you uh, have? It was acute lymphoblastic leukaemia. Okay. And it was, uh, I had a high white cell count of 183, I think wow. you said. Mm. Um, and there was about six, six platelets, six count on platelets. Um, so yeah, so we came down and I had a white cell reduction for two days. Yeah, I came down and sort of didn't know what we were going to do. I, the doctor said I'd be in hospital for a while. I said, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I sort of thought thought for the worst all the time and you know, that, yeah, I was going to die and all the rest of it and didn't really know a lot about it. Um, didn't know anything about chemotherapy or treatment, just sort of believed what the doctor told me. Just said, yeah, okay, let's get started on it. So did you share your fears with your wife or did you try and um, keep them to yourself? Um, you... We sort of didn't have a lot of time together. Did... She rarely came to visit at the hospital okay. um, and I said, don't bother coming over just you know purely through um, having that the rest of the kids. So you feel you might have cocooned yourself just to get yourself through it or did you have um, other family? Oh no I had, had other family my brother um, came down and I've got my two sisters here in Brisbane. And you were uh, close? Yeah 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 mm -hmm. close and um, had plenty of good friends came to visit and um, I, it was just a matter of um, my wife Kelly and the kids trying to settle in down here and her mother came down and lived uh, here with us for, for the 10 months, or for the first 10 months, to help with the baby and whatnot. But she was a little bit worried too about coming over with me having chemo and the, and the possible effect on the baby oh, and whether okay. there was anything. And she didn't like to be around, you know, with a baby, other sick people. And I didn't want her sitting with, by my bedside for hours and hours when she could be, you know, with the kids. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, so you mentioned that you uh, that just then felt that you needed a transplant. Yes, yeah. What was that process like for your siblings? And was, uh, was one of them a match? No, well, what, they had their um, blood test, mm -hmm. uh, whatever they do. They, tissue typing. Yeah, yeah, tissue typing. Yeah. And um, we just waited. It, it took a few weeks, actually, I think, or initial test and then second test. And they weren't within QE of a match oh. of me. And it sort of didn't question my... Um, heritage and my mother's um, background and <laughs> whether I really was part of the family. Uh, but we sort of worked it out that my father is full blood Austrian and being then a mixed race, he, found, he said it's hard, hard to uh, match and that sort of stuff. Uh, so they went out to the World um, Australian Register and there wasn't anyone. And then to the World Register and um, 
they, they said there wasn't anyone that they'd pulled a wrong file on me and said there wasn't a match. So I felt a bit depressed at that stage. Yeah. By the time I'd got home from the hospital, they rung and said they actually had a match. And all I knew was she was a 47-year-old um, lady from America. Just tracing back, yep. when you, you know, that time during not having anything on offer for Transbank, yep. that would have been a very anxious time for it, you. It was. Um, I sort of didn't know the full effect of um, why I had to have a transplant because I'd got into remission fairly quickly mm -hmm. and I said, well, I'm right, you know, I'm in remission. He said, well, probably not, you'll be right for 18 months, but you're more than likely going to relapse. Okay. And I thought, oh, well, I've got to have a transplant. Always Did you set yourself goals? Yeah, I wanted to get back to work was a, was a big goal. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously trying to get out of hospital, on a, mm -hmm. you know, and not visiting on a regular basis, so not a daily basis. and breaking it down to I've only got to go every three days now mm -hmm. and then leaving the leukaemia village was another big milestone and actually mm -hmm. moving to Maruchidor into our house. Yeah. So that was a, um, a good milestone but scary mm -hmm. because you're so used to the routines of the hospital um, and the comfort almost of hospital and security. Were you a little bit depressed? Oh absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I thought well I've got to get home 